You know, sometimes in life you just can't catch a break, and it seems like everything you do to try to fix the situation only ends up pushing things from bad to worse to catastrophic. Like, I once saw a drunk guy stagger out of a late night takeaway with a kebab in hand, only to lose his grip on his prized lump of artery clogging saturated meat, and fumble to catch it before it fell to the ground, causing him to lose his balance and stumble face first into a plate glass window. And thinking about that poor unfortunate drunken soul who had to retreat home with no food, a bloody nose, bruised ego, and the mocking laughter of me and my friends ringing in his ears, I'm reminded of Snow White actress Rachel Zegler who seems to be single-handedly tanking the box office prospects of her multi-million dollar movie, to the point where even industry experts are warning that she's rapidly turning into box office poison. See, one of the weird little side effects of the current Hollywood strikes is that there's not a whole lot of news and controversy coming out of Tinseltown right now, which has given the internet a bit more time to reflect on other things, like past interviews on the subject of Snow White that were largely ignored at the time, but have soon come back to haunt Disney and Rachel in recent weeks. And holy shit, have they provided fertile ground for backlash and mockery. I was scared of the original cartoon. I think I watched it once and then I never picked it up again. I just mean that it's no longer 1937 and we absolutely wrote a Snow White that she's is... She's not going to be yeah. saved by the prince. She's not going to be saved by the prince and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be and the leader that her late father told her that she could be if she was fearless, fair, brave, and true. Reality is that the cartoon was made 85 years ago and therefore it's extremely dated when it comes to the ideas of women being in roles of power. I'm gonna stand there 18 hours in a dress of an iconic Disney princess. I deserve to be paid for every hour that it is streamed online. But uh, it's really not about the love story at all, which is really, really wonderful. And whether or not she finds love along the way is anybody's guess until 2024. Um, all of Andrew's scenes could get cut. Who knows? Shite. 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 Oh yes. That's shite. No offence, Rachel, but you're making it pretty tough for people to like you. Now, I don't pretend to know what exactly was going on in her head when she said stuff like this. Maybe she was just a bit nervous and overwhelmed by all the attention and didn't know how to respond with the kind of slick, blandly diplomatic answers that a more experienced celebrity might have given. Maybe it's because she's young and idealistic and just blurted out the first thing that came into her head about the movie and the character. And so, I don't really want to dump on her too much for all this controversy. Yeah, she's definitely creating the impression of a spoiled, entitled narcissist narcissistic actor who totally doesn't appreciate the amazing opportunity she's been given. Yeah, her comments on the actor strike were pretty poorly judged for someone getting paid more from one movie than most actors make in their entire lives. And yeah, the things she's saying about Snow White make it seem like the very antithesis of the animated classic that stood the test of time a lot better than her own movies likely to. But really, when you get right down to it, she's just another dumb actor saying what she thinks people want to hear. The bigger problem is the studio culture that's someone like Ziegler represents, because you can bet your left arse cheek that most of these talking points were handed to her directly by the PR people at Disney. Yeah, she might not have phrased them in the most elegant way, but the sentiment they represent is dead on brand for a company that's become the studio equivalent of a snake eating its own tail, desperately cannibalising their back catalogue of classic movies in an increasingly futile attempt to stay relevant. See, when it comes to their other live action remakes of animated movies, they were generally smart enough to stay pretty quiet about the little changes they were sneaking in for modern audiences. Yeah, sometimes actors and writers would slip up and say a bit more than they were supposed to, and things got a bit more overt with Peter Pan and the Little Mermaid. That was fun. But for the most part, they were content to pay tribute to the originals and market the remakes as respectful adaptations. Right from the off though, they seem to have taken a very different approach with Snow White. It feels like they're making a concerted effort to cast the original movie as some horribly dated relic of a bygone era that we're all supposed to look back on and laugh at with the benefit of our modern, enlightened hindsight. Rachel certainly doesn't think much of it, and neither does Gal Gadot if their interviews are anything to go by. And ironically, there's something weirdly outdated now about turning the main character into this fanatically independent, power-hungry girl boss who 
doesn't need a man. It's the kind of talking points that were all the rage five or six years ago when this whole movement in Hollywood was still in its infancy, but that was then and this is now. The strong female lead isn't the fresh new concept it was back in 2016. In fact, even in the mainstream media, there's a growing acceptance that this kind of bland, superficial archetype has run its course, to the point where it's become kind of a meme in its own right. Either way though, I can't help wondering, is this really the attitude you want to display towards one of the most beloved animated movies of all time? The one that literally made Disney what it is today? Do you really want to be seen shitting on the accomplishments of previous generations when your own efforts are probably never going to reach the same heights of cultural influence? Because at a certain point, it really just comes across as a jealous, envious attempt to drag down other people's work rather than elevating your own. As Mahler so aptly put it in one of his videos, this this isn't a passing of the torch, it's a torching of the past. It's a deliberate attempt to rewrite history and destroy the legacy of the thing you're so desperate to supplant, while conveniently forgetting that there's a reason movies like Snow White have been enjoyed by generations of audiences. The stories they told are timeless and universal, instead of trying to catch the ever-changing winds of the political and social zeitgeist. They weren't written for modern audiences, they were written for every audience, from the 1930s to the 2020s and that's precisely why they worked so well. And as much as you and your friends might look down on them and mock them for not aligning with whatever fads and trends happen to be the current thing, the inconvenient truth is that they'll still be remembered long after your own lesser efforts have been forgotten. You are but a passing ripple in the pond of history, whereas they are history. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.